everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Fallout New Vegas. We are in another Repcon facility. As a matter of fact, I think these are the Repcon headquarters. And we still have some active uh, you, maintenance robots here, which is rather impressive. But one of them is actually a tour guide. So he offered us a tour of the museum, I believe. And who could refuse a tour of a museum? Certainly not Hera. So we're going to take him or it up on that offer. Let's Welcome talk to him back. again. Interested in a tour of the Repcon Museum? Or did you have a question about the company I could answer? Well, actually, I may want to start with a few questions. I can answer whatever questions you'd like, provided your query is limited to Repcon history, research and development, or Robco. Also, apparently, I locked myself in a very weird camera angle, but okay, um, I just want to ask a few questions. Tell me about Repcon's history. Repcon's illustrious history began way back in 2054, shortly after the famous Delta XI rocket was completed and launched. Repcon's initial focus was on the development of fuel to be used in orbital propulsion in response to the energy crisis of 2052. Mm. Sad times indeed. The company really took off when Robco purchased Repcon in late 2076 to develop unmanned rockets to explore the solar system. Okay, well, um, I think I had more questions about Repcon. I can answer whatever questions you'd like, provided your query is limited to Repcon history, research and development, or Robco. Okay, tell me about research and development. As you may already know, Repcon is an industry leader in producing alternative fuels for military and scientific purposes. Repcon scientists were pioneers in fission-based propulsion systems and have recently had some very exciting breakthroughs with plasma systems. The recent partnership with Robco has freed our engineers from mundane business hmm. matters, allowing them to focus solely on future projects. Okay, well, um, that sounds I can good. answer whatever questions you'd like, provided um, your query is limited to... Yeah, I've heard that already. Tell me about Robco. I mean, I kind of understand what Repcon is doing, but what is Robco's role in all of this? Robco Industries purchased Repcon in 2075 to assist with some of Robco's military projects, as well as developing unmanned space exploration. The relationship between Robco and Repcon is mutually beneficial, and we hope that both companies bolster each other well into the next century. Yeah, that didn't quite happen because of the war, right? But that means that these maintenance robots are probably floating around here since like 200 years? I guess they are just m keeping each other maintained as well, because they still seem to work just fine. But yeah, I think that's enough about Repcon. Very well. Feel free to ask me more about Repcon at any time. Don't be shy. The tour showcases Repcon's amazing scientific contributions and the promise of many more, coupled with its parent company, Robco. Yes, I definitely want to see all your scientific achievements in the museum, so can I have a tour? Excellent, excellent. Please be patient, the tour will begin in just a moment. All right. Ready for the Repcon tour, Rocketeers? Courtesy of the fine folks at Robco, I'll be your guide today on the path of scientific discovery. All right, well, um, I guess we're just going to follow our tour guide here, huh? Oh, this is a museum? Um, In there's the nothing here. Case behind me is a spent radioactive rod from one of our old reactors. No need to stand too close. Let's <laughs> move along, shall we? Seems someone already looted that. Look here, a row of multicolored plasma fuels. <laughs> Careful. They may look safe to drink, but your stomach is the last place they should be. Why the difference in cylinder size? Refining our production methods has resulted in higher yields of fuel over time. That's why. Fascinating. And don't worry, I was not uh, trying to drink it. Apparently I can also read these uh, plaques, but I'll do that later. To my right, you can see a sample of some old safety barrels Repcon once used to store radioactive waste. <laughs> Perfectly safe. On my left is an example of a mountain of Repcon safety barrels some legislators claim are poisoning our environment. Ridiculous. Really? Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that looks totally safe. Why would you even put that in a museum? Well, this looks a lot more interesting over here. Be 
behind me is our most recent rocket project, which mm. we're keeping under our hats until launch, if you'll pardon the expression. And in front of me is a model, not actual size, of the launch dome we are using to send our rocket yes. screaming into orbit. I have, I have seen that, which confirms that these are indeed space rockets, not surface-to-surface -surface rockets. They're supposed to go into orbit. Now these colorful fellows behind me are Repcon's earliest experiments in flight. Feel free to read the plaques and learn, Rocketeers. Okay, I will do that, but um, once we finish the actual tour. <laughs> this is a huge museum. I didn't expect that. Very enlightening. Hera approves. Now for the highlight of our tour. Due to a generous donation from Rodco, this next exhibit showcases the wondrous world of robots. Oh, yes. Around you are the incredible iBot, the fearsome sentry bot, and the <laughs> always helpful Mr. Handy. <laughs> that helpfulness runs through our whole line. Okay. I'll definitely have a look at these robots once the tour is over. Maybe Eddie will approve as well. Ooh, look at this. This is the this final is stop cool. on our tour. This model of our solar system is a small example of where the partnership between Robco and Repcon hopes to go. See those little rockets zipping about? They are manned by robots, tirelessly looking for resources to mine on planets beyond <laughs> our own. And that's it for our tour today, Rocketeers. Robco and its tiny partner, Repcon, thank you. Any further questions? Please, feel free to ask. This is actually really cool. I like this. <laughs> and it looks like there's even space below us. That's pretty neat. And it certainly makes Hera's science and client heart beat faster. But okay, apparently our tour is over now. Um, so I guess we're going to look around a little bit. And of course I need to check out these places as well, even though they're not officially part of the museum. <laughs> but who knows what we can find here. Jenny Millet security keycard. Oh, well, that might be useful. Can I actually use it on anything around here? No, I can't even loot the bodies. Nope, this is not functional, but uh, I will take the keycard. Maybe we will find some use for it later. But yeah, um, let's have a look at these um, inscriptions here. Our rich, rich solar system. A model of our solar system, not actual size. Beautiful, isn't it? Robco, with its subsidiary Repcon, has often gazed into the night sky Seeing the rich pageant of stars and planets above us. Our goal? To send unmanned rockets to those other systems, seeing their beauty firsthand while mining ever deeper into each planet's surface for precious resources needed here at home. This is our promise to mankind, extending our reach into a future where the number of Robco and Repcon rockets match the stars in the sky. This exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. <laughs> I feel that Robco is more interested in like the business aspect of this and the profit they can make off of this. It's just my feeling anyway. But yeah, let's have a look at all these interesting robots. It's got wheels. Some folks have asked why not a Protectron with wheels. Robco wasn't afraid to answer that question. The Protectobot is the answer. While safety standards prevented this freewheeling dynamo from entering mass market production, despite Robco's best intentions and teams of lawyers, we take consola consolation in letting you see this extremely well-funded experiment as it was intended. A robot moving so fast it looked like it's standing still. <laughs> Exhibit brought to you by your friends at Robco. <laughs> this sounds like some very weird promotional speech. Somehow I think that this robot was not really useful at all. <laughs> the hand in handy. 
You never can have too much, too many hands. Three, why not four? That was Robko's inspiration behind the popular and cost-effective Mr. Handy model. The first of the line shown here. Always a help around the household, household, whether with mum in the kitchen using its titanium circular power saw. <laughs> Why do you need a titanium circular power saw in the kitchen? That seems a little bit overkill. Or in the garage with dad using its armor piercing laser array. <laughs> Mr. Handy is not just helpful, he's your friend too. Yeah, um, I don't know. This might l be a little bit too much for using it at home. I mean, look at these <laughs> saw blades. I've never needed anything like that while being in the kitchen, to be honest. So, what do we got here? The eye in iBot. Oh, look at that, Eddie. You're an iBot too, right? Is this like a different model? Looks slightly different. Robco's always had an eye for robotics, and this little fellow is no different. This robotic marvel can not only recognize your face and voice with advanced facial and auditory recognition technology, it can also broadcast video and audio as well. Think of it, all the sights and sounds of your radio and TV in your living room at home blasted directly at you on the street, subway, bathroom or wherever you may be. Never fear, you'll never miss a news bulletin or presidential address again, no matter where you are. <laughs> Seemed like a rather inconvenient way to do this, though. I don't know. Having it blasted at you while you're outside, I don't know about that. And one more robot. Watch your step. Whoa, watch your step. You don't want to be facing this fearsome fellow if you accidentally stumble into a restricted area. Whether sporting the latest dual miniguns, rockets or laser cannons, the sentry bot not only takes its job seriously, it also takes no prisoners. <laughs> it's proof of Robco's commitment to defense and that these deadly guards are concealed in chambers throughout this facility. Oh, um, that's an interesting uh, piece of advice. So let this be a warning. Watch where you step or out will come Robco guns blazing. So... I have to expect sentry bots in this facility if I, you know, enter restricted territory. That's actually useful information. Anyway, um, this is the space exhibit. Let's have a look at it too. Green bean. Officially called Z4521P by silly engineers. We prefer to call this little scrapper by its true nickname, the Green Bean. After all, which would you prefer in your backyard garden? A smoldering Z43521P or a Green Bean? <laughs> One sounds like it belongs if mentioned on the news and make news it did, featuring Repcon's plasma engine. It was so newsworthy that we decided to take the quantum matter modulation unit out and see if we could use it for non-explosive uses. <laughs> So, this was not a success and it exploded, I presume. Big Fat Fury Fred. The V29321G may look like a big fat red rocket. Rocket here, but O1's fatty here can run circles around the Earth not so long ago. So, let's see you keep up. Sure, V29321G's re-entry gave it its more commonly known nickname Big Fat Fiery Fred, but here at Repcon we chose to focus on the successes and apply what we learned about explosive resistance shielding to future models and even our landing platforms. The newly reconstructed Repcon launch facility was a direct beneficiary of this discovery. <laughs> So I guess this one actually made it into space, but then it exploded on impact when it came back. Okay, another failure. Needle nose. This sleek and purple R77293A needle nose is what happens when you mix fossil and plasma in a rocket and shake it up. 
The fossil fuels punch this sharp nose terror through the sky and the plasma is used to shoot it through space to planets where Repcon can mine more fossil fuels, continuing the whole cycle again. <laughs> yeah, is this actually efficient, trying to collect resources from space? Is it not just too expensive and resource intensive to actually get them? I don't know. Interplanetary mining and resource rights still in negotiation. All right. But who are you negotiating with? Aliens? Ready, set, launch. Force your parents a short drive south and you will see the retractable dome of Repcon's launch facility. Not actual size. You may have heard wild stories about rocket flights and their impact. Statement is figurative and inadmissible as evidence in a court of law. On nearby towns and communities, but Repcon feels you can't put a price on space exploration. After all, Rocketeers, you, you do want to go into space someday, don't you? Oh, I most certainly do. Rockets away! Just like the rocket you see here, we are aimed at the, sc we are aimed at the sky and we've got a ceiling in the way. See, Rocketeers, while Repcon is, was, focused on non-radioactive propulsion engines, we still need to sneak back and use some of our older proven techniques with nuclear-driven engines to make space travel a reality. Partnered with our new buddy Robco, we've dug up older, cheaper technology for upcoming orbital projects. No worries, even if you can't always see what we're up to up there, we can see you. Any implication of radioactive material as negative is unintentional and in no way reflects Robco or its subsidiary Repcon. So this is not nuclear, but I mean the uh, space rocket at Repcon facility most certainly needed radioactive fuel, right? Nuclear family! Why, look here, a pile of itty bitty safety barrels all nestled together like a family sitting down to dinner. <laughs> now, while it's claimed even the safest nuclear waste disposal procedures seep poison into the environment that never ever goes away, in Repcon's case, we say it all depends on where you put them. In Nevada, and Nevada's just a place. <laughs> Nomenclature for hazardous waste barrels as per Repcon glossary specs. <laughs> Why would you even include that in an exhibit. Why is this of importance to visitors? So basically you're just dumping the stuff into the desert. That's totally safe. Radioactive waste. We've all heard stories that radiation is dangerous. Fact or fiction? A common sight in factories, military installations and the basements of selected government funded middle schools. <laughs> These safety barrels are just what the name implies, safe. While their attractive coloring can be interpreted as a warning, for Repcon it's an invitation to a future filled with nuclear power. Rhetorical questions and nomenclature of exhibits, exhibit items cannot be used as a basis for criminal prosecution. They always keep saying that, they apparently have some bad experiences with that, right? Boring old rod, or what's this? A dull rod? Not so, Rocketeers. This dull rod once powered Repcon's old nuclear propelled rockets and still contains harmless traces of radioactive material. As an exercise, stare closely at the rod and try to spot the telltale glow. While this case is lead lined, a standard in these cases not specifically requested for this display. Do not touch, look or stand too close to this exhibit. Keep your legs moving and see the rest of the museum. <laughs> well, since someone already took the rod, I guess I'm safe. Plasma what? Hold up, Rocketeers, what's this? This tree of cylinders isn't a tree of cylinders at all. They're containers holding what some scientists call plasma. <laughs> what do the other scientists call it? Can you say plasma? Repcon's always looking to the future and in our future we don't have to worry about radiation, health risks and lawsuits when using this new and improved fuel source to blast our rockets into 
and out of the sky. Clarification. Cylinders and plasma are factually correct designations of display items, both by definition and by the scientific community. <laughs> so it is plasma. You just don't want to call it that for some reason. Anyway, do we have anything of interest in here? Um, let's have a look around. I see a bunch of crap. Um, this is not interesting. Well, I guess I'll take this. But, oh, hang on a second, there's actually a door here. Oh, it's um, locked. And it's a very high level lock too. That's a pity. Look at all these lunch boxes. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I have seen the entire museum. Oh, is there anything here we can read? I think we have a few more doors that we can check out. Okay, this is just a restroom. How may I serve you, mistress? Um, thanks. I'm fine. Oh, and this is another restroom. Okay, um... What about this door and terminal over here. I mean, I can't use... Oh, I can open it with the security card that I found. Well, that's making my life a lot easier. Alright, um, I hope we do not have any uh, sentry bots around here that are trying to kill me. Hey, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Very hard. Unauthorized facial pattern detected. Uh oh. Valid security badge detected. Yes. Temporary access granted. Please complete employee registration with security. Okay, apparently that security card that I found actually saved me here. Um, okay. Well, that's good. But let's look around a bit and see if we can actually do anything here. So I can't open this door. Apparently my keycard is not actually opening this. Um, okay, we have a terminal here. And I have enough science to try to hack it. So let's give this a try. Okay, four attempts, and again, I will probably just start with one random word, and then we will see where we go from there. None of them is correct. Not a single one. <laughs> well, actually, that is not that bad. It really helped me the last time when I only had one letter correct, because that way I can exclude a lot of words. Um, for example, it can't be this one. Can't be this one. Can't be this one. It can't be this one. <laughs> um, it could be this one. This doesn't share any letters. Okay, now it's three. Um, now let's keep looking for words that share no letter with selecting. Um, this one, for example. And it does share three letters with entrances. No, no. Have I, have I done something wrong? Um, oh yeah, yeah, apparently that wasn't correct. So one attempt left, which means I either have to be really certain that the next one is correct or I have to start over again, right? Uh, okay, can't be this one. 
It could be this one. No, it can't. It has one letter in common with selecting. Can't be this one. Can't be this one. Um, can't be this one. Can't be this one. Can't be this one. <laughs> can't be this one. It can't be this one either. Or this one. Convinced. It could be this one, but let's make sure that it doesn't conflict with the other uh, words. So, it should have at least two letters in common with controlled. Which it has, and only two. And it should have three letters in common with entrances. Which it has. It has to be convinced. Come on, this has to be the right one. Yep, there we go. Ooh, this was difficult. <laughs> Add user facial data to database. Oh, yeah, right. I want to do that. Facial data added for first floor access. So I can at least um, enter the first floor. And let's read the correspondence to To all Repcon employees from Piers Isley, General Manager. Hello again, everyone. Those of you in the main building may be curious about the men doing all the work in your offices and hallways. They are measures. These measures are in place for your safety as well as the safety and privacy of your Repcon family. Along with the hardware and software security changes each of you will also receive a personal packet with an identification badge. It is very important that you wear your badge at all times. Again, this is for everyone's protection. Oh, and everyone feel free to take a long weekend as soon as you have received your personal packet. Have a great holiday, Piers. Okay, let's read this one too. To all Repcon corporate employees from Karl Rook, Vice President. Hello everyone, my name is Karl Rook, as I'm sure you can tell. I'm your, newer, I'm your new vice president, until recently I was at Robco working in the security division. But now that your family and my family are one big family, we thought it would be nice if they send an older sibling over. Why do you talk like that? These people are grown up persons and not children. You talk to them like children. <laughs> now I'm going to do as much as I can not to interfere with your daily operations here. My principal concern is going to be security. I hear that you all have been adapting well to, to some new security procedures. Well, we've got some new kids to join your little family here. <laughs> You'll see some friendly androids patrolling around the main building. As long as everyone remembers to wear their badges at all times and make sure they are properly Re registered with security, these friendly androids will stay out of your way. So as long as you all keep on as you have been, everything will be just fine. Thanks for your time, Carl. Please remember that third floor access is for executives only. If you need assistance from me or peers, feel free to give us a buzz on the phone and we'll send you down the daily password. Thanks. Hmm. So if I want to go to the third floor, I would need a password, which will be kind of hard to get because uh, I'm pretty sure this guy isn't alive anymore. But okay, um, I guess uh, we have at least access to the first floor. So I don't know, maybe I want to check out the first floor while I'm here. Um, this is not a terminal I can hack. So, I don't know, I should maybe be looking around a lot just in case I can find that password in some other fashion, right? Okay, this is going up. Locked very hard. A sign skill of 100 is required. 100. 
Ah, uh, well, I am not quite there yet, but at some point I will be. It's my my aim to become the smartest person in the wasteland, so at some point I want to be uh, at least science 100. So, okay, um, I can check out the second floor, but I'm not entirely sure if I have access to that or if I will get attacked by the robots. And since apparently this place has a lot of, you know, high science locks or terminals, um... I may want to come back later when I actually have enough signs to properly look around here. I mean, this is like all high security and lots of robots and terminals, so I'm guessing that there's going to be more of that uh, later in in this uh, place. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave for now and I will come back later once I'm a bit more smarter and have more signs so I can actually explore this place completely. Um, yeah, let's just leave for now. And I guess I'm just going to continue onwards towards Vegas. I mean, I guess I can look around a little How bit may I serve you, mistress? in this place. Um, look at this over here. Is this like part of the other Rapcon facility? I don't know. I don't remember it being so high, but it could be the launch facility. Anyway, uh, let's see what's going on over here. Also, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this over here must be New Vegas, where all the light is coming from, right? Also, looks like we have another building here. Oh, it's another train station. I find it creepy that sometimes in some of these places there's just a random radio that's still active. Why? How is this going all this time? Yeah, it's this radio over here. I feel that it shouldn't be able to play music anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, I see a bunch of crap around here. Well, lots of Pre-war money, apparently. I'm sorry, you're slightly in my way here. Guess I'll take all of it. Oh, there's even more of it. I mean, it's not that valuable, but since it doesn't actually weigh anything, I guess I may as well take it. There we go. So, what else we got here? Cigarettes, take them too. Ooh, a doctor's bag. Um, the fission batteries are heavy, but uh, they're actually pretty valuable. But I'm going to give them to Eddie because I don't want to carry them. I'm sorry. Um, I think they're over here, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm almost full again, which I don't like at all. Can I give you some other stuff too? <laughs> um, for example, I don't think I need that at the moment. I don't really need that either. Alright, I hope that you are not overburned. No, Eddie still has quite a bit of space. That's good. There's a lunchbox. But, yeah, it doesn't really look like there's anything too exciting in here. So, let's just leave again and let's move on. Um, where did I come from? I think over here. Alright, onwards to New Vegas we go. It's still quite some distance. Let's go back to the big road and then we will move on from there. Uh oh, Take well, um, yep, that's that's more Legion soldiers. And they really got it in for me now, huh? 
once they are even slightly close to me, they immediately start to charge me. All right. Let's just use a few of these again. And I think the remaining legionnaires I will just take down with a gun. Also, I mean, just in case, I may want to use at least one stim pack. <laughs> Let's not get cocky here. Alright, I think I should get a little bit closer so I can actually get in a few hits here. Okay, um, there we go. I think that's all of them. It most certainly is. Uh, sure, let's take everything that isn't like super heavy. Take the healing powder too. And let's check the other bodies as well. Also, um, use a sunset sasaparilla. I mean, they're assassins, so I'm guessing they're specifically looking for me because I have so much legion infamy. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of a vicious circle, right? I have legion infamy, so they're sending out assassins to kill me, and by killing the assassins, I get more infamy. So. <laughs> That's not going to change anymore. Um, what is this? I'm not sure if I need that. Sh sort of shotgun. I don't need the spears. But I mean, the shotgun is at least somewhat valuable, so I'm going to take it. Alright. And once again, overburdened. You need to take more stuff, I'm afraid. But I can also, like, combine a few things. I should be doing that sooner or later. Um, but for now I'm just going to give everything that I don't need myself ready and I will do some repairing and combining later. <laughs> Maybe off camera. Alright, what do you got? A revolver? Um, a super sledge. It's heavy, but it's also very valuable, so I'm going to take it. Um, okay. I think that's all of them. If I have looted these guys already. Okay, um, I think we're done here. Let's get back on the road. Oh, is that a caravan? I totally want to talk to the caravan and sell them some of my loot. <laughs> you are a blessing. So who's the merchant? Hey there. Need anything? No, I just want to sell you something. Sure. Here's what I got. <laughs> Let's see. I want to sell that really heavy one that I just got. Um, the super sledge. It's not quite as valuable as it was shown in the menu over here, but still, that's quite a lot of caps. And I mean, it has a lot of damage, but it's like a melee weapon. Not sure if I really want to start using that. Um, I'm going to sell the mines. I'm not going to use them, knowing myself. Um. And I don't really want to sell any of that. <laughs> I guess I can sell you all the pre-war money. And of course the cigarettes. Okay, um, I hope that's going to be fine for the time being. Do you have anything that I want? <laughs> A very expensive laser rifle. 
And just the usual usual stuff that I normally don't need. Okay, fair enough. No, no, um, I want to sell you stuff and now I want to exit. Okay, here we go. Alright, um, thank you for that little trade. And yeah, I'm on the road again. So I guess I'm just going to follow it to the north. Now this place over here, Camp McCarran, has been mentioned several times already. So maybe I actually want to visit that on my way to New Vegas because that seems to be an important place. So I guess I'm going to follow the road up until this junction and then I'm going to make my way towards Camp Karen and check that out. Anyway, I see a bunch of um, NPCs over here. Hey. Grub and Gulp rest stop. Okay, what? Welcome to the Grub and Gulp. Are you selling here? What is this place? Just a little rest stop that me and my good friend Lupe set up. Last stop on your way into New Vegas, first stop on your way out. That's I what I say. <laughs> um, may I ask some questions? Sure, fire away. Is there any way to buy weapons and armor? I think there are a few places, but I've heard that the gun runners sell mm. the best. They are not uh, dealing with me, I'm afraid, because I'm not good enough with guns. Where can I find a doctor around here? Dr. Usanagi runs a medical clinic up the road. Okay, well, um, that might be useful. All right, then. So, what are you selling? Sure thing. Anything else I can do for you? Um, well, that is rather underwhelming, to be honest. <laughs> I don't need any of that. So, goodbye. See you later. But we have more people around here. Loop. You need water? I got water. Clean and fresh. Straight from Lake Mead. If you're low on caps, I've also got slightly irradiated <laughs> wasteland water. A little fallout never killed anybody. Are you sure about that? Show me what you have for sale. So where exactly do you get your water? The NCR fixed up the pipe network pretty good, and water merchants like me are allowed to have some of it to sell. If we have a water license, of course. Still, it beats the inconvenience of having to trek all the way to the lake to resupply. Okay, I see. Are there many water merchants around here? There's a few independent ones like me, but it's mostly the big trading outfits that deal in water, like the Crimson Caravan Company. Oh yeah, I've heard about them before. I have a few more questions. Shoot. Anything I should know about New Vegas, for example? They won't just let anybody into the Strip, but you should be able to have a good time in Freeside itself. Just, um, hmm. keep a close eye on your caps. So you can't just stroll onto the Strip? They are keeping, like, some people outside? Uh, tell me about the fiends. Right, I saw a few dead ones in that uh, Repcon headquarter. There are a bunch of crazies hopped up on all kind of drugs. Apparently, they're using one of the old vaults as a hideout. Okay. The army should really get in there and wipe them all out. But I guess they've got more than enough trouble to deal with right now. So it would seem. Um, and yeah, what do you know about the NCR? Their main base is right over there by the old airport. It's called Camp McCarran now. Some people like to paint them all as a bunch of bullies. Me? I'm glad they're around. They do what they can to keep things safe and orderly. Okay, yeah, I guess I do want to check out Camp McCarran. All right. And yeah, sure, show me your wares. Glad to do it. <laughs> and yeah, she has water, unsurprisingly. But I don't need any. Until next time. Okay, um, anyone else that I can do business with? Um, doesn't look like it, but we do have some quote-unquote beds over here. So maybe I actually want to stay for the rest of the night and continue my journey in the morning and that's going to be the next episode because this one is getting long enough so yeah as usual thank you for watching and see you again next time